It's a sad day for Limerick and indeed Ireland as the Frank McCourt Museum is set to close its doors later this month. The museum dedicated to the work of Pulitzer Prize winning author Frank McCourt is housed in his former school here in the heart of Limerick City. Not only is the museum a wonderful dedication and representation of McCourt's life but also to Limerick as it shows what the people of Limerick went through post the Troubles, at the beginning of World War II and at the start of the Great Depression. Described as a museum surviving only on a labour of love, the museum's owner and curator Una Heaton is deeply saddened at the news that the museum will no longer be open to the public. Up until this point, the museum solely relied on volunteer work and financial aid funded by Una Heaton herself. As I said, I started from nothing, one school desk and a little mannequin that I brought up from a shop that closed in Limerick, legs missing, arms falling off as I've been followed up the street with an arm here you just lost your hand miss so um, I just put it together and gradually people just became interested in dropping me and stuff and old photographs. Although Manny donated props to add to the authenticity of the museum it was Una's attention to detail that blew Frank McCourt's brothers Alfie and Malachi away as she describes the moment the brothers felt like they had travelled back in time. The minute I put the kitchen and bedroom together, you could feel a presence of something. Even when Malachi, Malachi came to open it with Alfie, Alfie actually stood at the kitchen door and he just said to me, just, just leave me a minute. And I felt there was a, something powerful happening. And he just turned to me and said, I don't know how you've done it, but you've, you've captured the feeling of the kitchen that was. And Malachi turned to me and said, Una, you've done amazing, he said, but so much so that you put a sink in. We didn't have a sink, you know, but it's a luxury we couldn't afford, similarly. The books are translated into 48 different languages. Mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere I go, I pick up a copy of them, and Ellen, his widow, has given me all the copies of the um, translations. And when you get people coming in and they say, I haven't got a book of the translations, like in Japan or whatever, or out of Mongolia or something, they send it to me. Actually, I have books. You know, it's amazing when people are writing lovely letters. So, um, yeah, it's very meaningful. You know, I do feel his spirit is here. It has to be here because his ashes are here. I've done, I've done it, right? I feel I can pat myself in the back, not because it's brilliant, whatever, but I tried. And I think bringing the people to the museum from all over the world gives you a great feeling of, gee, a pride and given the story for Frank to, you know, to appreciate his writing and to honour him. I'd love him to have seen this, to see what he'd thought of it, but I think he'd have given me a seal of approval because he, he'd, like, he'd like the memory to be, to be here, but God only knows what's going to happen to it now. With the closure of such a monument of both history and storytelling, we ask the question, who is standing up for Ireland's heritage? 